All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about function notation. This video should feel a lot like about what we learned back in chapter five when we were really heavy on doing input-output tables, stuff like that, um, and doing domain, range, uh, independent variables, dependent variables. This should feel a lot like that because essentially that's what it is. In this section, we're gonna focus on doing input-output tables and function tables, but we're gonna do it while adhering by something called function notation. So it's the same process as what we did before, but it's just a slightly different way of writing it. It's a way that to, it's gonna organize us so that we keep track of how to use the notation, the labeling of functions. It's gonna come in handy when we start having more than one functions in a problem that you'll have later in Algebra 2, um, and maybe a little bit in Algebra 1 in pre-calc. But for now, I just wanna give you an idea of just basic function notation, how we're to keep track of it. So before we go anywhere, um, let's review what we talked about before, um, way back in Chapter 5. We know that x is our input, and we know that y is our output. That is the standard way of listing those variables. x is your input, y is the output. Now, because of that, x is also going to be your independent variable. It's your, in, it's your input, so it's the one that you choose. The one that you choose. So it is also your independent variable. It's the one that causes everything, whereas y is your dependent variable. We don't know what y is because that's the output. We don't know what y is until we put it in x. So it all depends on x. It's all about x. That's what determines what it equals. So what we're going to do is we're literally going to describe function notation as it's a function. It essentially depends on x. So it's really considered as being a function of x. So what we're going to do is we're going to write the notation looks like this. I'm going to put a quotation mark so you literally write this. F parentheses. And inside the parentheses, you put x. That is pronounced f of x. That's how that's pronounced. f of x. That's how we say it out loud. So now, that's a way, that's short for saying function f. We're calling it function f because of that f, because you can have more than one function in a question. I mentioned that earlier. If you have function f, function g, function h. But essentially, in seventh grade math, and for even most of eighth grade, and most of algebra one, we're only gonna do one function at a time. So we're just only gonna call it f. So this is function f. This is a function of x. This function depends on x. It technically depends on whatever its input is. But for most, for most questions, for 95% of questions, they're always gonna make that input x, just to keep it standard so there's no surprises there. So anyways, let's go, ahead, let's go ahead and actually write out what I said. So f of x, that means function of x. It depends on x. As a brief reminder, what is a function? Well, technically the definitions in this first sentence, a relationship, a relationship that assigns exactly one output value for each input value is called a function. Meaning, take a look at this input output table down here. If you plug in one, if you plug in one and x is five, so two times one is two plus four is six. If you plug in one, you're only gonna get one answer out here. You're only gonna get one output. That's what it means. One input gives you exactly one output. And so the function or the process, all this math we did, times two, then add four, that is the function, that is the process, that is the relation. But because an input only gives us one output, that makes this rule, this relationship, makes it a function. So just know that's technically its definition, but essentially it's just gonna be, for us, what we've been doing in all of seventh grade math, everything is lines. So everything's good when we graph it would be a line or a linear relationship. That's essentially what we're talking about here. Um, in Algebra 1 and even in Algebra 2, there are many things that are functions that aren't straight lines, but for the, but for the purpose of what we're doing now, we're just going to focus on straight lines. Anyways, so f of x equals the function of x. Now, this is the part that's good news. f of x, f of x, fx, don't say fx, it's f of x, it means the exact same thing in terms of how we use it, in terms of how we write it. It means the same thing as y, your friend y. So look at this example one for a moment. Find, I'm specific all that. It says f of x equals two plus three x. Back in the day, as in um, eight, eight chapters ago, we would have written this as y equals two plus three x. Or we would have written it as y equals three x plus two. Either or, they mean the same thing. So that's how we would have written it. The only difference now is instead of y being labeling the output, we're labeling the output as f of x meaning the value of this function, once we've determined x, will equal this. But we're just calling it f of x. That's its generic name. So just keep, keep that in mind. It literally replaces y in terms of most of the purposes of how we use it to set things up. So this input output table, stick a y on top if you want to, want to remind yourself. 
choose your X's or sometimes they're chosen for you, plug them in an X's spot, then do the order of operations, see what it equals. That's your output. That is the value of F of X at X equals negative one. So when X is negative one, the value of the function is two. Or back, or what we would have normally done is we would have said when X is negative one, Y is two. So we would have had an ordered pair at negative one comma two. This is very similar to that. And in fact, you can look at it that way. So what I want to do is, you're welcome to hit pause and read through the examples you see on the screen for a moment. But really, I want to jump right in there, do a few examples for you, and then cut you loose and let you guys work on your own. This isn't going to be a very long video. I just want to show you what function notation is and briefly describe why we're using it. Um, and then just at that point, I'm going to let you use the same skills you learned back in Chapter 5. So if you are having difficulty with this input-output process or domain and range, like remember, domain is your x values. So if you literally just list the x values, that's your domain of the function, meaning that's your x, your x, that's your left right x range that your function would cover, your dots would cover, and then if your range would be the y values of this graph. Now we're not talking the entire line on the graph, for now we're just talking about these specific points on the graph. So anyway, so no domain and range. Go back to chapter five, need more help with that. So before I move on, I do want to say one more thing um, about function notation. Other than you knowing that f of x is y, it's a label. It's not an operation. It does not mean f times x. It does not mean that. It is just a label, just like saying y equals something. Additionally, take a look at what we have right over here, um, where it says find f parentheses 5 if f of x equals 2 plus 3x. In other words, that has a meaning. It's, it doesn't say f of x right there. It says f of 5 or the function when x is 5. That's what it's saying. But let's, let's, let's put this into words so we know what this is saying. It's a really fancy language I'm about to use. This means, hey, I'm going to plug in 5 for x. That's what it means. I'm going to plug in 5 for x. It either means you're going to or you already did, and that's part of your answer. So you'll notice, um, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to necessarily do this example, but I will briefly show you. At, once you plug in the f of 5 right here, that 5 inside of x's spot of the notation, notation just being a proper way to write it that's consistent that everyone can read and understand, this, by changing that to a 5, you're saying, I'm going to plug in a 5 in x's spot. So where that used to be an x, it's now a 5. Then just do the order of operations, you get 17. So you write your final answer as this as f of 5 equals 17. That means when, that means the value of this function is 17 when, when the input is 5, when x is 5. The value of this function is 17. That's what that means. This whole thing is the answer. It's the proper notation for the answer. I agree 17 is the output value and 5 wasn't, but that those combined give you your answer. At some point in Algebra 1, you might be asked to put your answers in the form of an ordered pair. And if so, you would just write it in an ordered pair like that. Since that's the x value and then the, that's the y value, you would write it like that if you were graphing it. Okay, so that's function notation. So now let's jump through and let's do a few examples together. For each of them, I recommend, I would like to see you hit pause and try them first on your own. That way you can already just get hit the ground running. And like I said, we'll probably do two, maybe three examples of function notation for just straight questions. We'll also review some fraction skills inside of, inside of a couple of them and some negative skills. But then we're going to uh, maybe take a look at a couple of word problems and then we're going to be call it done. So this is not going to be a very long video. So just, uh, just make sure you hit pause and try each question before I, before I go over them. Okay, so these are the two problems we're going to try together. See if you can, uh, you can show how to set these up, how to plug them in using proper notation and getting your final answer. Try them first on your own. Okay, so let's start writing it out. So the first one tells us, um, if your function is f of x equals negative 2x minus 5, if that is your function, evaluate, see what the function equals, this is how we're interpreting it, saying this out loud, see what the function equals when we have an input of negative 14, or when x is negative 14. So we're going to change this to negative 14. So now if you do that, you literally, for this one, I'm going to do it right, be I'm gonna do it right below it. So you would say, okay, so that means f of negative 14 equals, that's just the label, we're not actually going to do anything with that, negative 2, open parenthesis, close, minus 5. So because it told us to plug in or evaluate at negative 14, that's what we plug in right here for x. It becomes a negative 14. 
And at this point, you just use your order of operations to see what the right side equals. You do not touch the left side. The left side is just a label. You change nothing. So the left side is still just going to be f of negative 14. That does not change. It is just a label. Now, what you're going to do on the right side, let's go ahead and knock this out. So a negative times a negative, that's a positive. 2 times 14 is 28. So that's positive 28 minus 5. Now you just have one step left. Go ahead and subtract those. 28 minus 5 is 23. And you have to drop down the f of negative 14. Now you've found your answer. You have evaluated this function. When you have an input of negative 14 or when x is negative 14, the value of your function is 23. That's how much your that's the value of your function at that location. That is the value of kind of like y. That's the value of y, 23, when x is negative 14. That's essentially what just happened in this example. So notice. We did not touch the left side. We, did, we weren't trying to solve for f, like you didn't see us trying to divide both sides by negative 14 to get f by itself. No, no, that's silly. We're not solving for f. It is not a value. It is just a label. So that's just saying, that's just saying it's function f. It is equation f or function f. That's all that's saying. It is not saying solve for f. So remember, that left side is a label that you must have, but it's not going to be part of your math. So don't let it make you think you have more work to do. Um, as a note, I want to point out, when you get to Algebra 2, you're going to have situations where you're going to put functions inside of functions and maybe multiply that by functions and then subtract it from a function. You're going to have sometimes a lot to do. And if you keep track of your proper function notation, that can help you be a lot more organized when it comes to working those questions out or simplifying and seeing what they equal. So be careful and take your time with your function notation. So start now, even though these are easy linear questions, start using proper function notation now so later when they have more complicated situations, you already remember how to read it, you remember what it means, you're going to be one step ahead of everyone else. So take, take this function notation very seriously. All right, we're going to do number two up here. Number two, it says evaluate it when x is 3 fourths or evaluate when the input is 3 fourths. So let's use our proper notation. So f of 3 fourths, just a label equals now negative 2 but instead of x and we put an open parenthesis plus half. Now inside that parenthesis we're going to put a 3 fourths. So I'll make that one red too. 3 fourths. So that's telling us make our input 3 fourths. So now you've got to go through and you've got to, and you've got to solve this. But now in this one we've got negatives, we've got fractions. So let's take this moment to briefly review our negative and fraction skills. So on the left side, that side's easy. We know we're going to have f of three over f of three fourths. That's not going to change. Just the label. We're never going to touch that. Now on this side, we have a, we have to do the multiplying first. So a negative times a positive. That's a negative. Now two times. So we already know it's going to be negative. So we go over the negative now. Two times three fourths. If you don't remember how to do that, take a look over here real fast. It's two over one times three over four. Now go now go straight across. So I multiply straight across. So that gives you six over four. 6 over 4 equals 1 and 2 fourths, and that simplifies to 1 and a half. So if you, if you already knew all that, obviously don't stress. You don't need to show all, those work, show all that work at this point. I'm starting to consider you guys to be 8th grade students, and a lot of people are doing this in al Algebra 1 or Pre-Algebra and higher. Um, so at this step, I'm not going to stress out when you're showing your work. If you didn't show me every single one of those steps, but show me something that indicates you understand how to multiply this problem. So that's going to give us negative 1 and a half is what that gives us. So negative one and a half. We still have the plus half after it. So now we just have to finish with the last step. We have to do negative one and a half plus half. So it's, this question sounds harder because it's a fraction, but think of this as if this had just said negative three plus one. Negative three plus one on your number line, you're gonna be heading one, two, three, four, so that's zero, that's negative three. So if you have negative three plus one, you're gonna be starting at negative three, go to the right one. So you'd be at negative two. So remember, when you're adding in the negatives, you're going to the right, and so you're gonna have an answer that's closer to zero. So if you're at negative one and a half, and you go closer to zero by half, that means you're gonna cut off that half and just be negative one. You're just gonna be one away from zero. So that means f of three over four equals negative one. That's what that means. That's the value of that function at x equals three-fourths, or at the input of three-fourths or 0.75. Yes, you could have plugged in 0.75 because it's a terminating decimal. It's not the end of the world if you had to resort to just using 0.75 here, but definitely caution against using that when you have repeating decimals. That sometimes can lead to a rounding error or lead to mistakes that you didn't quite expect, especially as long as you turn your answer back into a fraction if it needs to be. 
So this was two more examples of using proper function notation. And again, I'll say it one more time. Notice we never touched the left side. It stayed f of whatever we plugged in. That literally just tells you or the viewer or your coworker or whoever you're working with or yourself, I plugged in three fourths. That was my input. When the function had an input of this, this was the output. This was the value or this was the value of y. So just keep track of that. It just tells you what did you plug in and what did you get out of it. It means nothing else. That is what we mean by function notation. I'll briefly point out that if you have questions like these, we have input output tables. Just notice for questions like these, it's literally exactly the same as chapter five. Take net, um, either choose the x values or if they choose for you, so be it. Take those values, plug them in for x. So five times negative four is negative 20 minus six is negative 26. So you'll write that here, but you write negative 26 here. So just evaluate and plug it in. This is just like input output tables like usual, but just make sure you list the domain and range afterwards. These numbers will be your domain and whatever numbers you get here will be your range. All right, so give this question a shot on your own. Um, let's read it together and I'll give you a quick hint on it. It's phrased kind of kind of weird, not quite sure if it means what it means. So let's make sure we're clear. It says, we're talking about jerseys. The school basketball team wants to have each player's name imprinted on the back of the player's jersey. The cost is $60 plus seven, excuse me, plus $7.50 for each name. Write a function to represent the cost for the cost C, meaning that's gonna be your output, that's gonna be your final value. The va the, uh, so C is gonna be the output. For the cost C for N number of names. What is the cost to have names imprinted on 12 jerseys? So the hint I'm going to give you is, it's not $60 per jersey, it's going to be $60 for total. Okay, so it's going to be $60 for the jerseys total, but they're going to charge $7.50 per name that's being printed. So it's not 12 jerseys times tw uh, $60, it's $60 for the 12 jerseys plus $7.50 per jersey for the name. That was the misinterpretation. It wasn't super clear how it was phrased, but just be careful when you read these and make sure you try to uh, check both ways. So I give this one a shot. Now I'm going to point out that this question doesn't really require function notation to be solved. It just requires you to follow the instructions it gives you. It told you that the cost is C, and I mentioned to you that that'd be the output. No matter everything you do is going to equal your total cost. So that tells us our total cost is going to equal. Now, we said earlier it's going to be $60 uh, for the jerseys, so $60, and that does not depend on the number of jerseys. It's just $60 in this case because um, they already know how many, team, how many players they need. Now, that was a confusion. A lot of people were like, well, how did they know what, how many jerseys it was going to be? Is it 60 for 12 jerseys? Is it 60 for 10 jerseys? Like, it wasn't clear, and sometimes basketball jerseys that are custom can get really expensive. So that was where this one was kind of confusing. But we're gonna try to keep it a real simplistic interpretation. So we're gonna say uh, $60 just total, and then it's gonna be $750 per jersey. So, so that's gonna add to our cost. So $750 times the number of jerseys. And it told us to use N for that. N for names, meaning every person gets their own jersey. So N is also the number of jerseys. So that's your equation. Your input is N, your output is C total cost. Your input is the number of names. So now they told us, what is the cost to have the names imprinted on 12 jerseys? So what is the output, what is the cost, when we have 12 jerseys? So we're going to write the exact same thing, but this time we're going to change N into uh, 12 equals C. So we're going to change N to 12. Let's plug that in. So now our job is just going to use the order of operation to see what this equals. So, so on the bottom, 750 times 12, let's see, 7.5 times 12, okay, that gives us 90. So we have 7.5 times 12 gives us 90, plus the 60, all that will equal our total cost. Well, that means our total cost is 150. We're talking money, so that tells us $150. That's not a one. So $150 is what this is going to cost us. That is gonna be the total cost. And that is just an example of using your, a function, the function being the function they gave us in words. And now again, it's not the end of the world if you interpret this one as being $60 per jersey plus $750 per jersey. So it is kind of confusing when they phrase it that way, but just be aware, a lot of questions usually be more clear than that to identify what values depend on the number of jerseys and what values do not. We'll try one, maybe two more, and then we're gonna be all done. 
Now, we're not gonna do all four of these questions. Let's take a look at these four questions real fast so I can show what I mean by identifying what depends on the number and what doesn't. Look at number two. Number two tells us that this electrician from this company charges $60 for a service call plus $50 per hour. That means just for him to show up and give you his uh, and book you in his appointment schedule, he's gonna charge you $60. Even if he comes and he stays only for an hour or if he stays for 10 hours, just for him showing up and giving you his presence and his, his knowledge and expertise, that's gonna cost you $60 just for him to show up. Then it's $50 per hour for the actual labor of what he's doing. So when you go to incur this cost, it's gonna be $60 just for him to show up plus $50 times the number of hours that he sticks around. So this is what I mean by when they say it, it's usually gonna be more obvious about which one depends on the input, the input being the number of hours, and which one does not depend on the input. So that service fee, that service call just for showing up, did not de does not depend on the number of hours. Take a look at number three over here. Number three it says, Helene works as a teller at the local bank. She makes $90 per day plus $5 for each new account she opens. That means no matter how many accounts she opens, she's still gonna get $90. So that $90 does not get multiplied by anything because regardless, she's gonna make that $90. Now she can increase that by adding $5 for every account she convinced to open. So the X is going to be the number of accounts. That is the input. So it depends, those five, that $5 commission, I guess you could call it, depends on how many accounts. So how many accounts that she gets to open, those are the inputs. That is what you're going to evaluate. And in this question, they're asking you to evaluate it when, when the input is 3, when X is 3. So 5 times 3, find out what that equals and add it to 90. Now, number four, they didn't give you your function, so we're gonna start. Number, we're gonna do number four together, so we can talk about it, just make it from our scratch. Like I know it looked like these. Of course, it's what you said it was. It's kind of already gave us the answer a little bit in terms of what the function is. But let's take our time for number four. And in this question, it tells us that uh, we're talking about tickets. It says tickets can be ordered through the mail for an upcoming musical. All right, I didn't say upcoming. I threw that in there. The ticket costs sixty-five dollars each, and there's a three-dollar service charge for even making the order. Now, writing function using two variables for this equation. They gave us no letters to use, no variables. We have complete freedom for this. We can use whatever we want. Now, I'm just gonna stick with the standard. I'm not gonna make it too exciting. So I'm gonna go with just f of x. So the value of our function, in this case, that's gonna be the total cost. So f of x is like saying total cost. That's what we're saying right now. So f of x is gonna equal $65 per ticket. So $65 times the number of tickets, and X is gonna be the number of tickets right now. You could have used T for tickets, but if you use T for tickets, this would have had to be a T right here in this parentheses, since your input would have been T and not X. Then that $3 service charge, you're just getting charged out for them just to process your order. So whether you order one ticket, 50 tickets, doesn't matter. They're still gonna process your order and print them out and mail them to you and pay postage or whatever. So that $3 is a flat rate, it does not change. So it's just gonna be plus $3. That is not affected by the number of tickets that you order. That's why we're not multiplying it by three. So we have, so we have our, um, we have our function. So now the question just said, write a function using two variables for the situation. Oh, you're done. That's the answer. Except they did ask us to use variables. So for that reason, I am going to backtrack slightly. I'm going to say that let's not make this f of x since that's not technically a variable. That's technically a value. Um, that's a label for the output. Let's actually make that a variable. Let's make that. We'll just call it y. Um, actually seems boring if we have all this freedom let's uh, let's actually make these letters that actually maybe make more sense that are intuitive so we're gonna call X we're gonna call that T like we originally talked about T for the number of tickets that you purchase so 65 times number of tickets plus 3 now we'll call the total cost we'll call that just C for cost so there you go you've got your function now using two variables where C being your total cost and T being your input so that's an example of writing that function for us now let's extend this question and make it like one of those other questions, like the one to the left, um, where it says, well, hey, now, now evaluate it at an input of three. So that's what this is says. It says, at an input of three, what's the value of this function? So what we would do is we're just gonna meet, make the input three, meaning the tickets. And so if we were using function notation for this question, like I if we were using function notation, like I had originally had, this is an if, it would have been written like this. We would have said, when f of three, meaning evaluate it equals three, equals 65 times, instead of t, it's gonna be an open parenthesis, plus three. So now we're going to plug in that three that we're evaluating at over here. And by and again, remember, I made up this question. I just kind of combined number three with number four. I'm just making to make this the last example so I don't keep you guys too long. So now proper, um, proper function notation tells us, just drop down f of three, 
it doesn't change or get touched. So now 65 times three, well I know 60 times three is 180 and five times three is 15, so I got a feeling that's gonna be 195. So 65 times three, yep, 195. So that's 195 plus three, 195 plus three, that is 198. So that's gonna be our total cost, 198. So if I had said, evaluate this function um, with three tickets, or if I just simply said, find f of three and explain what it represents, here's how we would explain this. We would say, the value of this function, which is the total cost of our purchase, is gonna be $198 when we have an input or a number of, or we choose a number of tickets being three. If we chose to order three tickets, the value of our function is gonna be three. And this function depended on the number of tickets. So when the number of tickets was three, we're gonna have an output of $198. So that tells us $198 for three tickets. That's how we could put this into words. And I'm gonna make that the last example. And I just wanna remind you how to use function notation. Make sure you're practicing, guys. And just remember, function notation does not have to be hard and complicated. Just use the proper labels and make sure that you're understanding what it means when you have something inside of this parenthesis right here instead of an X or instead of a T in this case, if we've been doing it for this one. Take your time, practice, and good luck.